I wrote all I know about this job on that repair order. The customer said the transmission upshifted too early, but he didn't have time to go out on a road test with me. Well, at least we've got that much. I'll make a couple of checks first and then drive her around to see what happens. Harry, you'd better tell Tom how the transmission started acting up. Remember what the customer said? Hi, Tech. Yeah, I remember. The early upshifts began right after his hot rod brother-in-law tuned the engine. What's so important about that? Plenty. I'm glad you caught that point, Tech. It may help me clean up this job in a hurry. But how can an engine tune affect transmission shifting? The engine seems to be running okay. Maybe the engine's okay, but we don't know if the tune-up adjustments have upset the transmission throttle linkage setting. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, say, Tom, torque flight is sort of new to me. How should I check one out before I write it up? Well, you've had some experience diagnosing other transmissions, so you shouldn't have any trouble here. You can start your tests by making a check of the dipstick and linkage, and then do a road test. Anything beyond that needs shop diagnosis. And the fluid level's okay if it's between the full and the add one pint marks. Right. But first hold the car with the brake and move the selector through all the ranges and back to neutral so the operating circuits will be full. Of course, the fluid must be up to operating temperature when you check the level. I did all that just after the customer left, and the fluid level's okay. After all, this car's not very old. Be sure to check the fluid level on all cars, new or old. The level can be too high or too low if it was serviced by someone who didn't know how to check it properly. Good point, Tom. Incidentally, just why is correct fluid level so important? Well, first of all, low fluid level can cause 10 of the 19 service diagnosis conditions listed in the service manual. However, the main problem with low fluid level is that the oil pump takes in air with the fluid. Air bubbles make the fluid spongy and compressible so pressure builds up slowly in the transmission hydraulic system. The most noticeable effects of low fluid level are delayed engagement in drive and reverse and slipping on upshifts. You can also get disturbing noises such as pump whine and governor buzz. But worse than this, the slipping which results from low fluid level will cause overheating and rapid wear of clutches and bands. If low fluid level starves the pump so it can't provide adequate lubrication, other parts will also wear out. At the other extreme, where you have high fluid level, the transmission gears can churn up foam and cause the same slipping and overheating conditions you get with low fluid level. Foam and overheating can cause the fluid to oxidize and form varnish, which can make the valves sticky, even in a new transmission. All right, Tom, I'll remember. Now what's the story on changing the fluid? In normal use, the original transmission fluid should not need changing during the life of the car. However, if the car is used for trailer towing or in taxi cab, police, or other heavy-duty service, both the fluid and the filter should be changed as specified. Just remember to examine the condition of the fluid any time you check fluid level. If the fluid is discolored or shows signs of foreign material, the transmission may need an overhaul or a complete clean-out. Right, Tech. If the fluid is dark and smells burned, it means something's burned out in the transmission. The transmission may still work, but dark fluid usually calls for an overhaul to replace worn friction material and a clean-out to get rid of any varnish deposits. You'll know varnish is forming if the dipstick is tacky and doesn't wipe clean. After varnish starts, it builds up in all the valves, servos, and clutches and causes sticking. Eventually, it clogs the filter. Now, to get rid of varnish, the whole transmission will have to be disassembled and cleaned out. Don't forget that fluid overheating is a major cause of varnish. So when you call for a transmission clean-out, your repair order should include the transmission cooling system and the torque converter. Now back to you, Tom. Milky fluid usually indicates coolant leakage, probably at the cooler unit in the radiator. Engine coolant or plain water mixed with the fluid swells transmission seals and softens friction material, so the transmission will need a complete clean-out and reconditioning after the leak is corrected. And one final point. Make sure that only specified fluid is used for changing or adding fluid. Whatever you do, don't use type F fluid. It can ruin a torque flight. Tom, how about selector linkage adjustment? If the linkage needs adjusting, do it before you road test the car so you'll know it's okay. 
The most obvious signs of improper linkage adjustment are failure to start in neutral or park, or creeping when the selector is in neutral. You see, in neutral, the manual lever detents position the transmission manual valve between drive and reverse. If the linkage adjustment is off far enough in neutral, the valve will admit line pressure into one of these systems and the car will creep. Where the adjustment is off only a small amount, the valve can cause a clutch to partly engage and slip without causing creep. If this condition continues, the slipping clutch will burn out. Now, fortunately, you can use the neutral safety switch to make a quick linkage adjustment check. With the engine shut off, place the selector lever in the reverse or drive position. Then, press the brake pedal down while you hold the ignition key in start position. As you move the selector lever slowly toward neutral, the starting motor should cut in as the shift detent bottoms. Repeat the same check in the opposite direction and adjust the linkage if necessary. At the last place I worked, we ran the engine at idle and forced the selector against the reverse gate to check for creep. That's a good check, but you'd better have your foot ready to stomp on the brake pedal if the car starts moving. The shift selector linkage on this job is okay. So throttle linkage is next, right? It's next if the engine's up to par. Both upshifting and kickdown are affected by the throttle linkage adjustment. And you can't get a good adjustment if the engine's not right. Well, we probably won't have to worry about low power output here. But where the engine's not putting out, the gas pedal must be pushed down farther to accelerate. When the pedal moves farther, the extra travel moves the throttle valve far enough to raise throttle pressure and line pressure higher than normal. The throttle pressure increase delays upshifting, and the high line pressure makes shifting harsh. And before you get any ideas, you can't make up for poor engine output by adjusting throttle linkage, so don't try it. The whole thing boils down to the fact that engine power output must be up where it belongs if you expect to get good upshifts. Hey, throttle linkage adjustment and upshifts? Do you suppose... <laughs> You're getting warm, Harry. If that hot rod engine tune has upset the throttle linkage adjustment on your customer's car, it may be the cause of the unsatisfactory upshifts. Now, wherever possible, we eliminate throttle linkage as a possible cause of poor shifting by checking the adjustment before we road test the car. But if time's short, you can check the adjustment when you make the road test. First, put the selector in drive position and accelerate the car gradually. If the linkage is too long and moves the throttle valve too far, upshifts are delayed and harsh because the extra travel raises throttle pressure. At the opposite extreme, if the throttle linkage is too short and does not move the throttle valve far enough, upshifts are early because throttle pressure is low. And with short linkage travel, you'll find that there's no full throttle kickdown. Okay, so what else do we check on the road test? Well, I operate the transmission in each range to note how the shifting feels and to check the upshift and downshift speeds. The main thing I check for is slip. You see, slipping in any gear means band or clutch trouble. And naturally, trouble in the bands or clutches means a transmission reconditioning job. It means reconditioning if the clutches are worn. But where the slip is caused by band looseness, you may be able to correct the condition with a band adjustment. That's a good thing to know, Tech, but how can I tell bands from clutches by road testing? Where only one band or clutch acts up, it'll be easy to diagnose. If you note the ranges where slipping occurs, you can usually pick out the ailing band or clutch. You can find which band or clutch is applied in each range by referring to the chart in the service manual. There's also a simplified band and clutch chart in the reference book. On either chart, you'll notice that the rear clutch is engaged in low, second, and direct. If there's any slipping in all forward gears, it points to the rear clutch. Hold that pointer on the rear clutch, Tom. We'll be slipping out of the groove here if someone doesn't flip the record over to the other side. On the chart, you'll notice that the front clutch is engaged only in reverse and direct. If there's slipping in these two ranges, but not in the others, the front clutch is probably the source. Well, that's easy enough, but where do the bands come in? The kickdown band applies only in second. If the band does not apply, you'll get a 1-3 upshift, which skips second completely. 
Here, in place of the kickdown band, the overrunning clutch holds until the road speed is high enough for the upshift to direct. Where the kickdown band slips a little before it applies, there'll be a short delay and then a thump as the kickdown band takes over from the overrunning clutch. When the low and reverse band slips, the overrunning clutch takes over, so you can't check out the band under power. Here, you speed up the car to about 25 and move the selector from drive to low. If the low and reverse band is slipping, you won't feel any engine braking when coasting down. So maybe all the transmission needs is a band adjustment. It often is, Harry. But sometimes a band doesn't hold because the servo isn't working properly or because operating pressures are not correct. And that's where pressure testing comes in. You won't be doing these tests, Harry, but if you understand what the pressure test shows, you'll be in a better position to explain things to a customer. There are three hydraulic pressure tests that are related to slipping. We're concerned with uh, accumulator line pressure, kick down servo release pressure, and low reverse servo apply pressure. If you get the specified pressure at one test point, you'll know that the main pressure source is working properly. In other words, you'll know that the pump and the pressure regulator valve are okay. When you're sure the source or line pressure is correct, low pressure at any other test point means there's a leak or a blockage in that part of the system. Suppose the pressure is low at all points. It could mean a worn pump bushing. But low pressure is more likely to be the result of a clogged filter, an internal leak, or a stuck pressure regulator valve. That's right. Even if pumping volume is low because of worn pump parts, pressure can still build up in the hydraulic system if the filter is clear and there are no leaks at the torque converter or inside the gear housing. However, pump output volume lowers gradually as the filter clogs, and therefore, shifting action takes longer. Even though a pump may be able to produce pressure, the low volume delays band application and clutch engagement, especially in reverse. Of course, Hydraulic system volume and pressure can drop if the pump is badly scored or worn by foreign material. This usually means that other parts are worn also. And if the pressure regulator is stuck? Well, there's no easy way to tie low supply pressure to a stuck regulator valve, but a stuck valve usually means varnish. So where you find signs of varnish on the dipstick and line pressure is low, it's reasonable to suspect a stuck pressure regulator valve. Don't forget that a stuck torque converter control valve can also cause a line pressure drop. If the valve sticks open, too much fluid from the pump will bypass through the converter and cooler circuit. A good point, Tech. Now, where accumulator line pressure is low and you have already noted slipping in all forward speeds on your road test, the pressure drop is probably caused by a leaky rear clutch seal. However... Line pressure can also be low if there's a leak at the small diameter seal in the accumulator. Here the accumulator does not cushion the kickdown band application and the pressure drop may show up in a harsh one-two shift. Next, kickdown servo release pressure should follow right along with accumulator line pressure. Since the servo release and the front clutch apply systems are tied together, we can pressure test them both at the same point. Here again, low pressure indicates an internal leak. In this case, however, we are concerned with leaky front clutch seals if the transmission slips both in direct and reverse on the road test. Another possible leak may be at the kickdown servo piston seal. Can you pressure test the kickdown servo? A servo leak is hard to spot because both sides of the kickdown piston are pressurized in direct drive. If there's any doubt, we use air to leak test the servo when we get inside the transmission. Now, if our previous tests indicate that the front clutch seals are holding, we check the low and reverse servo apply pressure. A leaky servo seal causes low line pressure and slipping in reverse. There'll be no pressure buildup at all if the clutch seals leak. Okay, that takes care of band and clutch operation. Now, what about shift timing? Well, to simplify the whole thing, let's say that shift timing is controlled by the balance between throttle pressure and governor pressure. Actually, the shift valves do the job, but they are only pressure-operated hydraulic relays. Each shift valve is moved toward its closed position by a spring and throttle pressure. 
At the proper vehicle speeds, the valves are shifted open by governor pressure. The throttle pressure increases as the gas pedal is pushed down, and the governor pressure increases as car speed goes up. Both control pressures must be correct, or the shift timing will be off. And getting that pressure balance right depends largely on correct throttle linkage adjustment. Like Tom said earlier, high throttle pressure delays upshifting, and low pressure makes it happen too soon. Thank you, Tech. Now, if the throttle valve sticks, throttle pressure will probably stay low until the kick-down valve forces the throttle valve to move. Then the pressure increases abruptly. Unfortunately, there's no positive way to check throttle pressure. So you can't pin down the cause of early upshifts to the throttle valve by pressure testing. And that brings us to the governor valve. The governor valve operates by balancing centrifugal force and spring pressure against governor pressure. When the car is stopped, the valve holds in the out position and vents the governor system. As the car picks up speed, the valve gradually moves inward to provide pressure to operate the shift valves. If the valve is stuck in the out or vented position, it prevents pressure buildup in the governor system. When this happens, the transmission does not upshift. In the opposite direction, if the valve is stuck at the in position, governor pressure will be too high. Here the upshifts are early or erratic and you probably won't get normal downshifting. In the same manner, because the shift valves work like hydraulic relays, sticky valves need more than normal governor pressure to make them open, so upshifts are delayed. On the opposite side, more throttle pressure is needed to close sticky shift valves, so downshifts are slow, or you may not get downshifting at all. Now, while we're talking about shift valves, there's a part throttle kickdown plug in the 2-3 shift valve assembly used in our six-cylinder models. A stuck kickdown plug means there will be no kickdown until the gas pedal is all the way down to the floor. And last but not least, we come to the shuttle valve. The main function of the shuttle valve is to control shifting smoothness. There's no way of checking its operation, but if linkage adjustments and pressure tests don't help to clear up erratic shifting, a sticky shuttle valve may be the cause. You haven't mentioned lubrication pressure, Tom. <laughs> Say, you do know something about automatic transmissions after all. Well, lubrication pressure should be up to specs when we check line pressure and front servo release pressure. Check the condition of lube system lines to the cooler and make sure the connections are tight. Uh, before I forget, there are a couple of pressure testing precautions you should know about. Overspeeding the engine or running long tests can cause overheating at both the engine and the transmission. Use a tachometer to keep engine speed within limits and make your tests quickly. Well, that concludes my quick course on testing torque flights. Any questions, Harry? Not right now, Tom. You've given me plenty to think about for a while. But this much I'm sure of. From now on... I'll be doing a lot more checking before I write up a repair order on a torque flight or any other job. And I know a lot more about the whole thing, so I can ask the right questions when I'm road testing a car with a customer. That's music to my ears, Harry. We don't get too many chances to treat others to the service details that our master technicians need to do grade A work. I'm sure everyone in the shop, and our customers as well, will benefit from this session. Even though Harry won't be pulling transmissions apart, the testing information we just covered for his benefit will be useful to anyone who works on torque flight. As usual, a reference book adds more information that should help you do the kind of work that keeps customers satisfied and coming back for more. So long till the next meeting. <laughs>